Hi there everyone, this is DJ from GarageFarm.net Academy and in this short tutorial I'll be showing you how to achieve a cool text motion graphics intro in Blender with neon edges flowing around your text, just like this one. This will be a two-part tutorial. In the first part I'll cover just the text animation and how to animate these neon edges. And in the second part I'll be showing you how to add additional effects like the particles flowing and some animation of your camera. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Blender. So here we are in Blender 2.90. Let's delete the default cube and the light. We don't need them. We'll just use the camera. So let's quickly open the panel here. And in the transform settings, let's reset the location. By pressing Alt, you can change all the three values at once. Zero, we have it in the middle. And let's also reset the rotation and press zero on the numpad to go to the camera view. And now let's grab it and move it on the z-axis a bit. Now let's add the text object and go to the font settings. Just center it horizontally and vertically to the center. Now let's just type in some text. Maybe something like edgy neon. But you can type in anything you want really. So now let's also move the camera away a bit just to see it better. That's more like it. And let's pick a nice font for our text object. So here in the font settings, you can set the regular font to something that you like. I'll pick this one. And now let's give it some depth. So let's go to the geometry settings and do some extrude and maybe just a little bit of bevel. I'll set it to 0, 0, 001 and give it a little bit of extrusion. And now you might notice that when you uh, bevel the object, uh, the, the font gets kind of like offset outside. So if you go a little bit overboard, the letters might be overlapping. And if you want to counter this effect, just use the offset with a negative value. Now let's change the cycles and uh, take care for the shading. So let's go up here to the shading panel and let's create a nice material. I prefer to use the uh, node window. You can do that in the properties uh, as well, but I just find more freedom in the node editor and just let's make sure that we have the node wrangler add-on enabled uh, i highly encourage you to always have it enabled in general because you know nodes are fun and this just gives us some nice shortcuts and tools for handling the nodes so let's first use the ctrl shift plus t with the principal shader selected and that will set up our set of textures for the principal shader I just picked the wrong texture set so it just uh, didn't work quite as expected but uh, just take my word that it's working if you have like a whole full PBR texture set like from, for example from CC0 textures it will plug in everything for you I'll just switch this uh, material to metallic and now let's take care for the mapping so let's connect the mapping node to every texture that we have Let's make sure we use just uh, the generate the coordinates and let's uh, change the mapping of the textures from flat to box that will give us the opportunity to adjust all the three dimensions of the mapping and we have uh, the texture stretched a bit in the z on the z-axis so let's correct it quickly on the mapping node i think that will do yeah that's much better and also let's take care for the blending factor of the box projection mapping so it will give a smooth blend between all the three dimensions of, of mapping. So the transition will be smoother and also I'll adjust the rotation to have it running horizontally. Now let's take care for the lighting. I also adjust the camera lens a little bit to be a wider angle lens and i'll go to the rendered mode so we are working with cycles here so you can see that there's not much light in there so let's go to the world settings and use the new sky textures with the nishita model that's a new feature in blender 2.9 highly encourage you to have 
uh, fun with it. It gives you a nice sky dome with much control and natural looking realistic results. You can adjust the strength of the light here to get it less overburned, but I also um, highly encourage you to use the, the color management tab here with the exposure setting that you can just lower down and just leave correct values of light so that we really have enough light in the scene to work with. And just, just as, as with the camera, we just adjust the exposure of the shot we're doing. So this sky texture has a lot of cool features in it. You just play around with the settings to see how it works for you. It's just awesome for creating realistic lighting, like of a day skylight, which is not the scope of this tutorial. We we'll just need this for simply lighting our object. And now let's move to the key point of this tutorial, like creating this neon edge effect, animated neon running around our font. And to do that, we'll just duplicate our text object and quickly get rid of the 3D geometry we created. So let's turn down all the extrude and bevel to zero. And let's also convert this object to curve. Now we have a curve instead of a mesh and let's turn it into a 3D curve so that we only see the outline. But we want the outline to have some thickness indeed. So let's add a bevel again. And you can see it's just even giving you the half of the tube that we want. So to fix that, we need to change the fill mode to, uh, from half to full. And now you can see that it's nicely uh, turned into a tube, but it's kind of like a square shaped tube. So let's give it some uh, resolution as well. So the bevel has a setting for resolution. Let's set it up to eight and now more like it, like a round shape. Now let's create a material by pressing this uh, button to make it single user. And let's use an emission shader with a red color. Of course, we'll name it red accordingly. Now let's go to the curve tab once again. And there are two nice settings called bevel start and bevel end. And these ones we are going to use to animate our curve. So let's see what happens if we slide this. So nothing happens here right now. And that is because the curve is cyclic. So let's go to the active spline and uncheck this little box here, which, which sets this up to cyclic. You can see the E letter got broken and that's fine because now the curve is not cyclic and it has a start and end. So we can fiddle with the settings and see how it changes the, the place where the bevel starts and it ends. And to achieve our animation effect, we'll ju just need to keyframe these two values. So it's pretty simple, but it gives some really nice effects for motion graphics. And you can see that the width here is a little bit uneven. And to fix that, we'll change the curve once again to 2D. So it will stay kind of 3D with uh, some thickness, but it will just have an even thickness all across the curve. Now I'll fix that letter by hand here. You can leave it open if you like, but I wanted to have a full letter animated. All right, and now just let's add a keyframe. So let's make sure that we are on the frame one and let's set the value to one and let's press I. So you can see that there's a diamond there and in the timeline. So it means that we have a keyframe here and let's move our timeline to frame 100. And let's press I and you can see the there's a orange stripe here, which means that the value between the two keyframes is not changing, so it's a constant and we really need to change the value on the second keyframe. We have some buttons here to switch between keyframes, so let's set it up to zero and press bu the button again. Now we have now we have the keyframe with a value of zero, so if you play the animation now, you can see the curve is quickly appearing as the time goes by, so you can see that the tempo is not even, so that the longer part of the letter is animating quicker. And to change that, we will just need to change the bevel mapping to spline. 
and right now the tempo is constant. Now let's make sure that all the letters are animated, so let's turn into edit mode and toggle cyclist for with all the points selected. And you can see that all the letters got broken and they are animated just the way we want. So I'll just take a minute to correct the letters to make them full again, just by hand. Editing the points. And there you go. Now to make this whole animation a little bit more uh, sophisticated and interesting, let's create three copies of this edge. And let's make it red, green and blue, just like the TV standard for pixels. Let's quickly shift the copy them and let's give uh, each one a separate material, so a single user material. Let's rename it to blue and change the color. And the same thing with the green one. Now what I'm going to do is also offset the animation. So we'll just move the keyframes so that the animation of each line will change in time. Right now you can see they are all kind of like moving in the same speed and at the same time. And now let's pick one of these, like the blue one. Let's make maybe our timeline a little bit longer to 150 frames. And let's grab the keyframes and just drag them across our timeline. And now you see that the blue curve is appearing in a different point in time. So it will give some variation to the whole effect. And I'll repeat that for the green one as well, so that we have different starting points and end points for each curve. And I'll also move it into 3D space a bit, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And that's it! We have our animated neon around our text. You could make it glow in Eevee uh, really easily, but uh, in Cycles it's a little bit more difficult, but uh, I generally prefer Cycles for some more sophisticated look. And to make it glow, we'll have to use the compositor, and that will be covered in the next part of this tutorial, so stay tuned for the next one, which will be released very soon. Be sure to watch it. I'll cover also adding these particles effects and some camera movement to make it even more dynamic and interesting. So see you in the next tutorial, and keep blending!